So let's get started talking about dichotomous keys. So as, as I said just now, um, this will be revision for some of you. It will be new for some of you. Um, and for some of you, it is the millionth time for revision. So what I've got here is a mix of past paper questions as well as looking at how we do these things so that we can sort of get something new for everybody. So <clears throat> let us have a talk, okay? Um, using the dichotomous key, we're going to start there rather than building it because sometimes when you use something, it makes it easier to understand how it works. So as we use it, we can see what it is that they're doing, what features are they using to build a key. Okay, so this is a past paper question taken out of the multiple choice because they're nice and straightforward in there. Um, we have a diagram showing an animal found in fresh water and we need to use the key to identify the animal. Unfortunately, they're a bit boring and they only tell us A, B, C and D and they don't tell us what this animal is. He is a flatworm for interest's sake. So, when we get a key like this, it's the same as if we have a key going in this direction here. Okay, so let's build that key in a different format as well as we work through. So here's our wiggly squiggly flatworm. And maybe my drawing's not so bad today with his two eye spots. Okay, so use the key to identify the animal. First question is body divided into segments or not divided into segments. So if we were drawing it like this, it would be segments while body divided into segments or no segments. Okay, and if we look at him, he's lovely and smooth. So we are not divided into segments and we're going to three, straight to three. So if we look here, the question is, does he have a shell or not? So from no segments, we have shell and no shell. And he looks lovely and squidgy. There's definitely no shell going on there. So this is animal D. So this would be animal C. And just to finish off our lovely diagram, from segments, we would have gone to two. So we would have had straight body or curved. So we would have landed up at B if we'd gone wrong in the first one. And that's why it is um, so important that you concentrate when you're doing these. Yes, it, it might be somewhat simple, but if you concentrate, then it's marks for free. Whereas if you get a little bit lost or you're not concentrating and then you go squonk somewhere, you can end up in the wrong place very, very quickly. Okay, um, are you allowed to draw the dichotomous key in both formats? If you were asked to draw it um, and they didn't give you specific information about how they wanted it, then yes, both formats would be the same because they're both working exactly the same. You're working on a key with two choices at each level. Okay, so one other thing to look at here is what have they used? Okay, so we talk about features and we talk about answers for keys. Um, so this here was body divided into segments or not divided into segments. So the feature here was, um, does a, in English, the feature is segmented body. Yes or no, okay. The feature here is shape of body. And the feature here is presence of shell. So bear that in mind, there's a difference between what the feature is and how you actually setting out your key, okay? And different questions will be asking for different answers. Um, so it's really important that you um, use your um, reading skills very carefully as you read the question to figure out, are you looking for features or are you looking for answers? We're gonna work on that just now before as well. Okay, another question has come through. Um, what choice is preferred for exams? So same thing. There's going to be indication if you get a question like this, of, of which direction to go to, and then you must follow that indication. Otherwise, it's up to you, whichever one makes sense. Right. So, also a reminder, um, please, when you've come in, 
please make sure that your name is reflecting properly um, on the list. You can change your name um, because if you have a name that, that doesn't match your name, then you don't get registered properly at the moment. Um, so please do make sure that you've got the correct spelling of your actual name that you're using for Cambrian. Okie dokie. So now we have some more fun. Okay, this we're going to have to zoom out so we can see all these wonderful creatures. What we have here is, yes, okay. So that was a multiple choice question. Now we have a short answer paper question. Okay, and what they've given us is seven different species of amphibians. Okay, some of them you might recognize, some of them you may not. Um, and there's a little reminder here that they are not drawn to scale, so they're not all this size relative to one another. And the question continues on the next page, um, asking you to use the key to identify each species. Write the letter of each species, A to G, in the correct box beside the key, one has been done for you. And there he is, okay? B has been identified already. So, we don't have to do him, but we do have to do all the others. So what we're going to do is I've printed out a copy of it, the key, so that we can look at our amphibians and then still read through the key. So the first question in our key asks about the shape of the body. So starting with amphibian A, does he have a long, narrow body with or without legs? Or does he have body not long and narrow, back legs are larger than the front legs? Well, back legs are most definitely larger than the front legs, and he's not um, long and narrow. He's rather short and round. So this means we must then go to question five. Five says, is his skin smooth or not smooth? He looks lovely and smooth. So then we go to six. And six says, the digits end in swellings. So digits will be here or they do not end in round swellings and he most definitely doesn't have swellings on the end and if you a little bit confused have a look through and say ah oh, look here it's very distinctive round swellings on the end of this one's feet so this one then comes out as rana so what i like to do is I like to keep track of, of where I am and, and put their names on. It just helps again to make sure I'm covering everybody. Okay, so we'll go fill in the box once we've named them all on this paper. Sorry, this page, my paper, your page. Okay, so B is done. We need to do now C. And if we think back to that first question again, it was long, narrow, or not long and narrow. He's definitely a long and narrow body. So we go to question two. Next question, with or without legs? Most definitely he has legs. So go to three. Does he have a raised crest or no raised crest? You see this spiky thing at the top here? That's his crest. And if you look at the other long and skinnies, nobody else has a spiky thing across his, their back. So that helps us figure out, yeah, we're definitely raised crests along the back of the body. This is triturus. Okay, so they're not expecting you to know these names. They're expecting you to use the key to get to the names. Okay, so <clears throat> next one, D. Long and skinny again. So we are going to two. Definitely all have legs. So we're going to three. We don't have a crest in this case. We have a smooth back. So we're going to four. Now four has two options, gills present or no gills present. Now you might say, goodness gracious, what do gills look like on amphibian? So you use your brain again. We know we've got two long and skinnies, this one and this one. So the two answers here, one is gonna be D and one is going to be G. One has gills and the other doesn't. So think about where you'd find gills in a fish, up in the head behind the sort of eyes in the sort of ear position, okay? We're getting very untechnical here, but I'm hoping you're following what I mean. Okay, so if we look here, we have these sort of things sticking up. If we look here, there's nothing special. 
which suggests to us this is the one with gills. So this is Necturus. And this is the one without gills, which makes him Ambistoma. So now we have these two guys. Okay, we're going back to short fat bodies with long back legs. Back to question five. And here we have skin is smooth or not smooth. Well, E, definitely not smooth. He's very lumpy bumpy. So that makes him Oreo, Trinella, and smooth skin. Then we go to the digits and swellings, and we've already established he did have his swellings. So this is polypidates, or however you choose to pronounce your Latin. Okay, so now we're quite sure, and we've sort of confirmed as we go, that we're right with everything else. So we can just go here, and for future reference, fill these in. So this was C, D, G, whoops. And then E, F, and A. So it's really a case of working through systematically. Right, so another one. Working through again to, again, and show you this, it's not necessarily that you need to know what the key means. It's a question of using a process of elimination and using the other organisms to help you figure out what the key means. Okay, so here we've got important crops. And we have a key. Okay, so there is the key. I promise it's there. But again, I've got it printed so we don't have to slide backwards and forwards constantly. So the beginning of our key, first plant. Hold on, who was done for us? Let's just get that one. F. This one is, many hard. He is the cassava. Okay, so we need to start with A, start at the beginning. And what we say is, first question, are there branched veins on the leaves or parallel veins on the leaves? And if we look at them, on B, we can see how there's branches on these veins, okay? Whereas A, we've just got straight lines. So we are looking at parallel veins on the leaves, which means go to three. Now it asks us about grouping of the flowers. Okay, and we have an option for grouped together tightly or grouped together loosely at the top of the stalk. Okay, and all of this is about our parallel veins. So if we just look at A, D, and E, because I'm hoping that you agree these are our parallel vein ones. Everybody else has branching veins. Okay, so these are our parallel veins. Now let's have a look and use that information to help us figure out which are which. Okay, so flowers are grouped tightly, flowers are loose. And if you look here, this one is really stuck together, whereas this one is sort of floaty. So these ones are our loose, loosely, loosely, and this one is tight. So this makes it Try them. Okay, so then we go for our loosely ones, which means we have to go to six. Now, the question here is flowers are above the youngest leaf or below the youngest leaf. So the youngest leaf is going to be the newest one at the very top, because remember we're growing up. So where is our youngest leaf? Here is a little leaf, and here is a little leaf. So, here in our A, the flowers are above the youngest leaf. So, this is Zia, maize. Okay, that should give you a clue. This is corn. Okay, and then E is Oriza sativa because it is the flowers are below. And this is actually rice. And the tritichum is wheat. So those of you who have already gotten all the way to agriculture, now you're getting some revision of your important crop species. Okay, so 
this was also giving you a little bit of an example of a different way to approach one of these questions. Okay, we didn't just go A, B, C, D. We said, okay, these are all our parallel veins, so these are a little group, let's sort them out. So if we look at our other little group, it is our branched veins group. So working through for B, we have branched veins, so we're going to question two. Leaves divided into leaflets, they look like small individual leaves or leaves not divided. So if we look at B and C, we can see that contrast. B is one great big leaf, whereas C has got like three little leaves stuck together. So this then is the leaflets. Okay, this here is a single big leaf. So leaves not divided go to five. Now we have a nice simple one. Leaves have five lobes or leaves have three lobes. But well, what's a lobe? Well, you've all got lobes, you've all got ear lobes, things that stick out. So, leaf lobes, we be going one, two, three. So, our, our three lobe leaf is Ipomoea, which is our sweet potato. Okay, right. So, continuing this, we are then look for our not leaflets but five lobes. So G has leaflets, F has five lobes, and we agree with them. We also got to the cassava manioc for F. So we're very happy with this one. Right. Now we need to do the last two, which is our leaflets ones, C and G. So leaves divided into leaflets go to four. Okay, question here is about flower location. So our feature is flower location. Large flowers located at the top of stem, small flowers along the stem. Well, these are the biggest flowers that we've got printed on this page. And here are our little flowers on the stem. So large flowers at the top, this is our solanum, which is our potato. And small flowers on the stem, this is glycine, which is our soybean. So I learned today when I started Googling all these Latin names, I never knew that soybean had the flowers on the stem. So you can learn all sorts of things just by doing fast paper questions. Okay, so then we have to go and we still have to fill in our table because our marks don't come from our scribbles on the pictures, they come from the table. So. D, whoa, G doesn't want to work. Let's make this a bit bigger. It's easier to write on. G, okay, we're getting there. D, G, C, F, B, A, E. Okay, so now you've had two ways to work through um, a table. So let us have a look now. Working through a key even. Let's have a look at building a key. So this is a more colorful version of what you do in your textbook. Okay, so six organisms, build a key. Now, you're gonna come out with one key, I'm gonna come out with another key, somebody else will come out with a, a different key. So this is the one where I say, it's really great to take your key to, to somebody else and see if they can figure out and get to the right thing. Okay, so we're going to need to zoom out a bit so we have space to draw as well. So, something to split these things, okay? Now, thing is, we know that we've got carnivores and herbivores here, <clears throat> but we want to work on visual, um, because one of the things that you, you're given is, you're, you're given, as you've seen, black and white line drawings of things you don't necessarily know. So they also then would say, um, visible differences. So let's work on that. So we could have spots or no spots. OK, 
Okay, so if we have spots, we have two animals with spots. Okay, we have this one and this one, the spotted hyena and the leopard. So looking at these two pictures, what is the difference between them? One of the big things is that the, the leopard spots are not solid in the middle, the hyena spots are solid in the middle. But if we keep it even more basic, look at the size of the hyena's ears versus the size of the leopard's ears. So here we could say larger ears, smaller ears. And this would take us to the spotted hyena. And this would take us to the leopard. So I'm not counting the giraffe spots um, because the giraffe has more splodges. He's got a more of a geometric shape. Okay. So if we go, go to, to no spots, we can then go, remember we can only have two options each time. We've got to split into pairs. So here, okay, let's go for these guys. Horns. Ooh, look. We can have horns on all of those. No horns. Now, why is this one slightly dodgy? Because our lady waterbuck doesn't have any horns. Okay, but we've got our male in this picture as well, so we're gonna go on the horns. So, no horns. The only what guy left here is our lion. If we then take our horns, we can have curved. So now we're looking at the shape of the horns versus no curve. Okay, so our giraffe has straight horns. So here's where he lands up on this version. So now from our curved horns, what is the difference between the waterbuck and the buffalo? Okay, what can we use? We can't see the buffalo's bum, so we shouldn't really use the white circle on the bum for the water buck. Um, so what we could use is the direction of his ears. See how the buffalo's ears sort of hang down, whereas the water buck's ears stand up. So ears stand up and ears hang down. So this would give us our buffalo, and this would give us our water buck. Okay, so let's just change this one. Let's just make that a little bit clearer. No spots and round spots and no round spots. That then gets rid of any um, unsurety about the giraffe and his splodges. Okay, so I'm sure as you went as I went through that, you sort of had some, why is she doing that? She should have done this. And, and that's why I say it's, it's really about the features that you see and the features that you choose. And the best way to get these checked is to ask somebody to use them. If they follow your key, do they get to the right animal? So pick your six favorite animals and go make a key and see if somebody can manage. Okay, so. Let's just make these a little bit easier to see, separated from our key. There are our final answers. Right, so the last little bit, we're going to step up a bit. Okay, so now we've made a key. Um, oh, great, one last question before we step it up completely. Um, let's have a, a look at this one. Okay, we're gonna zoom in so we nice and big. Okay, so keys are used in biological identification. Which statement may appear in a key and alone could identify one of the parts in the diagram? So this is a nice multiple choice because it's not so basic as that identifying the round, a flat worm. Okay, so what we would have to go through is here and think about which one of these descriptions applies to only one. You're gonna be a bit dodgy, I'm gonna start from the bottom. Okay, the plant has pointed leaves. One, two plants. He's not gonna work. The plant has one flower on the stem. There's two plants, three plants like that. Not gonna work. 
many similar roots arising from a single point. One, two, three of them. That's not going to work. And now you see why I started from the bottom. Because this last one says the plant has a single deep root with small branches. There is only one plant like this. So this is the only feature that could, we could use to get to a single plant. So again, it's another example of how we can look at things. Okay, so we could split these pointed leaves versus rounded leaves. And then once we've done that, we split them again. Okay, but we have to get to a point where there's only one answer to that. Okay, right. So, here we go. This is a more interesting question, and I really am not good with managing time in these lessons. Okay, so, crabs are classified along with prawns, shrimps, and lobsters as crustaceans. Most crabs live in the sea, although some live in fresh water, and there are a few land-dwelling crabs. Figure 1.1 shows a structure of a typical crab. Now, this is why I've included this one, because this all sorts of pictures of organisms in chapter one in your textbook. And you really don't need to learn all of them because when they give you something, this question is all about crabs, they've given you the information. They don't expect you to know that that hard shell on the top of a crab is called a carapace until you read this question. In this question, they give you carapace. They give you jelly plate, also known as a claw. There's the eye. Here are the walking legs. And the abdomen is often tucked under the rest of the body. So when they give you information like this, it's to make your life easier. Because the rest of the question says, here are four different species of crab. And on my paper version, biologists use dichotomous keys to identify different species. Use figure 1.1 and figure 1.2. Ha, magic. Use the information they've given you and figure 1.2 to state one visible feature of each species of crab A, B, C, and D that could be used in a, in a dichotomous key to identify crabs. So we're not looking for a general feature here because they want us to give one feature for A, one feature for B, one feature for C, one feature for D. So if we were had a key, what could we use to get to each of these crabs? So, what are we looking at? Well, there's lots of different things, okay? If we look at this diagram, we can look at carapace, okay? So if we just think about the features looking at our crabs here, we've got different shapes of the carapace. Okay, for example, crab C has virtually square carapace, okay? A and D have spiky bits on their carapace. So the carapace edging would be another thing to look at. If we look at the claws, it's all pretty normal until we get to the fiddler crab. The fiddler crab has different size claws. So here we can look at size, length, okay. Then we have these eyes, okay? They've pointed out here the eyes. So if we look at all of these crabs, well, this is pretty normal, that one's like there. But this one, the stalks are like gone. And here, the eyes are on great long stalks. So we could look at the length of the eye stalk. Okay, if we go back to the claws, we can see this one's got hairs on it, okay? This one's got spiky bits on his claws. So we could look here, again, also on edging. Okay, walking legs. We have different combinations of hairiness. We've got some funky things going on with the sand crab. So we could look at that as well. So we've sort of looked at different features and now you would go through and you'd say, for example, for, for crab A, we could say that the carapace has a spiky edge on the front. For crab B, we could say that the claws have hairs on the edges. So we're not going to use these features. These are features that we've, we've gone through 
in order to understand what we're looking at. And then we go to apply that to each of our cabs and pick just one that would be special for that 